Get good, scrub. Dark Souls has had a profound effect on pop culture. So much, in fact, it's difficult to add something new to the conversation around these games. Unlike many of the other genres I have covered, or will cover, there are already dozens of video essays discussing the philosophical aspects of Dark Souls 1 alone and its themes of existentialism and nihilism and all that jazz. And to be honest, they are probably better than whatever I could say in about a tenth of the time about the Souls-like genre as a whole. So instead, I think an analysis of the broader cultural reasons behind its popularity could prove interesting. Probably the funniest take I've heard about Dark Souls is that it's about capitalism. I mean, this isn't Dead Rising, a game where you were in a mall fighting zombies, where you can make a good case for that. This is something a lot deeper. However, since everything has to be about capitalism apparently, let's start there. Video games, since their inception, have been used to make money. Arcade machines were designed to steal coins from you. And because of this incentive structure, businesses wanted as many quarters as possible. The result is many video games from the 70s, 80s, and early 90s were really hard, usually in unpredictable and unfair ways. The difficulty caused the customer to fail repeatedly, and he'd have to spend more money for another attempt. When home consoles came around, however, the incentives changed, and games gradually became easier. There were no longer fresh quarters for every try, and difficult games would only frustrate players, which would create negative reviews and lower the sales for the game. I would say, in the early 2000s, there was a healthy equilibrium of game difficulty. But by the 2010s, video games became insultingly easy. Games now catered to making themselves easier, even including payment options for things to lower a game's difficulty. Games like Uncharted and the Telltale games started feeling more like movies, and some games even removed fail states entirely. This new incentive structure made people fall back on a basic assumption of human desire. That being, that pain is bad, and pleasure is good. However, taken to its logical conclusion, this simple philosophy has turned video games into boring walking simulators where nothing really happens. Why should anyone ever face adversity when they should be enjoying themselves, right? Why should one ever be frustrated when they can just skip the hard part? Games could then appeal to everyone from 3 to 103, for a game with the most mass appeal would amass the greatest profit. But what if there is another kind of profit? Demon Souls came out in 2009, and it was a designated failure. They expected the game to bomb, so they had more creative liberties. They made the game really punishing. When you die, your health bar is cut in half, and the enemies become stronger. Not to mention there can be a lot of currency and items on the line, should you fail to pick up your bloodstain, which makes it so you have to reach where you died in order to retrieve it, which is probably the most brilliant mechanic in the game. Far from allowing you to skip difficult sections, or making things easier, the game forces you to dwell on your failures and learn from them. Failure to learn is met with a harsh reset. The game is also unforgiving and cryptic. The game autosaves constantly, so you can't just load a save to help undo your mistakes. This creates a sense of permanence to everything you do. The game can't even be paused, which means you never feel safe. You can't even go to the bathroom without wondering if you are going to be attacked by something while you are gone. Finally, the game defies all common video game tropes. You see a large enemy and think he'll be slow and lumbering to compensate? No, he's actually faster than the little guys. Rescue someone and expect a reward? You get stabbed in the back. See a little rat and think it's the most harmless enemy you've come across so far? Wrong. It infects you with plague, which will kill you in seconds. All in all, it does the opposite of every video game of the last 25 years. It makes everything more frustrating. Now I know what you're thinking. This doesn't sound fun at all. However, you have to trust me when I say it actually is. The game is never unfair or cheap, it's just strict. You need to take it slow, engage enemies one-on-one, -on -one, and constantly block. Every time you die, it's a learning experience. You learn enemy locations, timing, and the best weapons to use. In other words, the game trains you to get better. By the end, you'll feel like this amazing badass that can do anything. It's one of the most rewarding gaming experiences I've had in recent memory. Naturally, Demon Souls was a massive success. Why? Psychic profit. There is more to life than money and pleasure. People don't want endless gratification. 
They want a meaningful accomplishment. That is psychic profit. That sense of achievement. The idea that people are purely profitable people, that they're purely after monetary profit, they're after income, after material wealth, that kind of thing. That's mostly true, but is not entirely true. And that's the thing that I appreciate about the Austrians, and in this case specifically Mises, where they do expand the definition of profit to encompass everything. And um, one of the criticisms, of course, aimed at the Austrians is that they're too vague, they're too broad, they're not specific enough. But if it's correct, if it's realistic, if, it, if it's a correct explanation of reality, then who cares if it's vague? Who cares if it's too broad? They're pursuing something that they believe will increase their overall satisfaction and happiness. So even when they're, even when they're doing hard work, something that they don't enjoy doing, some kind of work that is suffering, and they would rather not do it if they didn't have to. Even then, they're still increasing their overall psychic profit because they're thinking long term. They're thinking this, yes, this is a means to an end. Demon Souls completely reimagined what a video game is. Far from just a pleasurable distraction and time killer, it's almost a rite of passage. The sequel, Dark Souls, expanded on this further. Every Dark Souls player remembers their first time in Blighttown. It's almost like it's part of a trial or initiation. This is what I mean. I know it sounds a tad pretentious, but it's as if it's a spiritual experience. But I think people miss the mark when they conflate difficult for the sake of difficult with a genuine challenge. The Souls games are not supposed to be like Cat Mario or a bullet hell game where it's just excessively difficult for no particular reason. But nowadays, everything from Cuphead to Crash Bandicoot is compared to Dark Souls. But neither of these games are Souls-like, they're just slightly harder than average games. But perhaps Demon Souls and Dark Souls aren't Souls-likes either. They are the Souls games. You can't be like what you are. I'm not human being-like. I'm a human being. At least, as far as I know. These games are the genuine article. You wanna hurt me? Go right ahead if it makes you feel any better. I'm an easy target. Yeah, you're right. I talk too much. I also listen too much. I could be a cold-hearted cynic like you. But I don't like to hurt people's feelings. Well, you think what you want about me. I'm not changing. I like, I like me. My wife likes me. My customers like me. Because I'm the real article. What you see is what you get. It's everything Dark Souls 2 and Onward and all the rip-off games that are the Souls-likes. For a Souls-like is a game that's like Dark Souls. Simple as, I'm gonna blow your mind. Dark Souls isn't actually that hard. In fact, I have even beaten Demon Souls without dying and with a melee build to boot. And I don't say that to brag. Well, I don't say that primarily to brag. I say that as a demonstration of how fair Demon Souls is. I am absolutely not one of those people who can beat Black Dragon Calamite with a dance pad, or beat Dark Souls 2 at level 1 with no armor, no shield, and not taking any damage. Not even close. I am but a slightly above average skill gamer, and I still did it. There are even people who played Demon Souls after the other games, and were disappointed because they were expecting, I don't know, the multi-phase boss battles of Dark Souls 3, the ridiculous enemy horrors of Dark Souls 2, and the dodge-spam heavy combat of Bloodborne. In other words, they were disappointed because they wanted to play a Souls-like game rather than a Souls game. I believe the Souls-like has lost the essence that the Souls games possessed. They have traded that meaningful sense of accomplishment in favor of masochistic self-trolling. There is a much deeper message to the Souls games, and the Souls-like is just a hollow imitation of it. The Souls games challenged you philosophically. They weren't just trolling you, or expecting you to manipulate frames and hitboxes. They wanted you to learn from your mistakes and enhance your perspective. They wanted you to feel like you were genuinely on an adventure, and overcoming adversity. Everything in Demon Souls and Dark Souls is memorable and distinct. The boss fights aren't just reskins of rehashed Bloodborne battles that are nearly interchangeable with one another. They are all different. People remember the fight in Dark Souls against Sif the Wolf, because towards the end of the fight, she starts limping and poses no threat to you whatsoever. 
As I mentioned about the game being philosophically challenging, it makes you think about what you're doing. It makes you wonder if you were the bad guy. It adds some depth to the character of this boss fight. Whereas the fight against the giant wolf in Dark Souls 3 is just another button mash-a-thon, where there's not really anything to it other than just, you know, timing and rolling around and slashing a bunch. It's just not the same. It's like a Dark Souls game, but it's not a Souls game. And I know people love to hate on the Dragon God fight from Demon Souls, but honestly, would it be any better if it was just like the old Iron King from Dark Souls 2? I don't think so. I actually prefer that it's more like a puzzle than a boss fight. It's more like a stealth section, which is kind of an interesting take on a Souls boss fight, which we haven't really seen since. And don't get me wrong, there have been some damn good Souls likes, such as Elden Ring, but nevertheless, they have lost the full sense of psychic profit the original games had. They have become the new marketing gimmick. Excessive and unnecessary difficulty has become the new trend once again. Get good is the new. Insert coin to continue. <laughs>